Hi, I'm George, and in this video I'm going to show or give you a guide as to why I chose the Heimer B534 um, to do um, our 18-month wild camping adventure. So um, we went around the UK for 18 months back in 2014 and 15. Um, and, uh, you know, why, why did I choose that one? So we spent, um, so I'll just scroll up here, so this uh, blog post here. Um, so this is what I'm talking about, the best motorhome for wild camping. So if you've uh, looking at this video, hopefully you've uh, you've, looked, you've read the uh, the first part here, and you know what wild camping is in a motorhome. Um, but really, what my definition is is wild camping in a motorhome is when you park, you, you know you're allowed to park overnight somewhere other than an official motorhoming campsite. So. Um, when we did our trip, we I think we uh, we stayed in one official campsite once for one night, and that was it. So in the eighteen months, we only did it once, and we realised no, we don't ever want to do that again, and we just wild camped wherever we went. So, um, but before we chose the motorhome, we did a crazy amount of research because um, it's a big decision obviously uh, i mean we 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 put you know uh, we could only afford a, a second hand um uh, motorhome um and so we paid about ten thousand uh, pounds but that's still a significant that was a you know significant amount of, to, of money to um to fork out um so we wanted to make sure that we um you know we researched and uh, we'd chosen the right one because once we'd got it, we, uh, you know, we're on our trip for 18 months and we were stuck with it. So, um, uh, so I think that's probably why we probably spent a bit longer than a normal, maybe a normal person when they're <laughs> purchasing a motorhome, but we knew we were going to be living in it for 18 months solidly. So we had to make the right decision. So I, sp you know, we spent weeks, uh, researching. So what we found is the first part is, you know, you, you know, if, you, if you're wild camping, uh, you absolutely have to have a motorhome that is under 20 feet. So if you go anything over that, it's classified as a, you know really a large uh, motorhome, and you're going to have a world of pain if you're wild camping because you've got to go off the beaten track all the time when you're wild camping, and you cannot do that in a large motorhome. I mean, you could try. But you'll it will be hell, and your trip will end within the first month because it'll be just, just too much pressure. Um, so I've got you know some of the benefits here of uh, of a compact you know motorhome under twenty feet, easy to drive. So that's really really important because you're going to be if you're full timing, um, especially if you're full timing. But even if you're not full timing. Um, you, you want it to be easy uh, to drive. Um, you know the the large twenty three twenty four uh, footer motorhomes. Uh, if you're if you're in towns and cities, um, it's uh, it's not going to be much uh, much fun to drive. Um, and uh, you're like I said before, you're going to be going off the beaten track a lot. So you uh, very narrow roads and you especially here in the UK you've got trees and all sorts of branches of stuff all jutting out onto the road when you're going off track into the onto these small sort of paths and they're almost not roads sometimes so um you know you don't want to be taking your 80,000 pound sparkling large motorhome off track too often um so that's another you know uh, I probably should put uh one of the benefits here is gonna get a motorhome that you don't really, you know, you're gonna scratch it up. Definitely, you're gonna have uh, a few things happen to it. And if you're constantly worried about your very expensive um, posh luxury motorhome getting scratched, that's gonna be a headache for you, and you're gonna be constantly worried. I mean, you're still gonna be worried, and you don't want to scratch uh, even, you know, our, our motorhome I got which I'm going to be reviewing in a second, is the, the Heimer B534. We bought it second hand. Uh, I think it was a 1993. Uh, so, you know, you know, 30 years old type thing. Uh, but I wasn't obsessed with or worried, too worried about, you know, scraping it. 
which you know we did a few times and that's inevitable it's going to happen um it won't happen if you're not wild camping if you're just going to the usual normal campsites and you've got a very big space that you can move into and you're hooking up to electricity um you know you don't have to worry about that but this this video is for if you're wild camping um you know you've got to get uh, a nice a compact motorhome under 20 feet so one of the other easily uh, benefit number three is easily park in towns and cities uh yeah if you have anything over 20 feet you can forget parking uh in uh towns and cities especially when they're busy uh and they you know parking spaces are a premium because uh, if you've got a big motorhome you're gonna have to park in two three maybe even four bays you'll be taking up uh so a motorhome that's under 20 feet so our heimer b534 fit pretty snugly into one spot you know you'd have the back go over a little bit but we would try to find uh, bits where we'd go into the grass you know um, so the back would go over the grass instead of into another uh, parking spot but even if we couldn't find that you know we'd take up one and a tiny bit of another space but pretty much most of the time we can get into one space so that's key because if you're wild camping and you're sort of full time and going for long trips a month two months or you know like we did for 18 months or longer uh, you need to get into towns and cities sometimes so uh and if you've got a large vehicle it's a nightmare you just uh you know you, you just you'd be driving around and around and around and around the town or the city trying to find a car park space not fun so the, the trip is meant to be uh, fun uh, that's why you're doing it obviously but um big vehicle not going to be fun uh benefit for travel lights so this is huge now so uh, minimalism you type minimalism into google and you'll find 560 million results with the word you know minimalism in it it's crazy so people really are um cottoning on to the fact i mean i'm a yoga teacher and i teach you know I, that's one of the big things i would teach is uh trying to <laughs> trying to lighten uh your life a little we all take maybe life a little bit too seriously uh i i'm a big you know i i'd call myself a minimalist really i have um uh i found that out. we we kind of found that out when we start did our trip we got rid of a lot of stuff because uh, we had to rent out the house um and we obviously traveling for 18 months we minimalized and only took what was absolutely crucial um and it was a revelation really really enjoyable so i can i can understand when people say travel light and um uh, what that actually means it's actually quite a spiritual thing and that's why there's so so much on minimalism on uh, on google because um it's it's a beautiful thing to travel light um and it's counterintuitive so if you're if you're kind of planning for a long trip in a motorhome you might think oh you know you've got to get loads of things blah, blah, and you'll worry you know worry yourself silly about making sure you've got everything um but really as long as you've got the core stuff like you've brought yourself the dog if you've got a dog uh and like some clothes or whatever uh you know you, you'll be surprised that you don't need uh much stuff at all and the less you can bring the lighter you'll feel and that's you know you'll feel great uh number five benefit number five is um yeah not having to shower all the time so i think the average person spends what 15 20 minutes in the shower every morning uh very quickly you'll get used to not needing a shower you know and you'll feel fine you know you just fill up a uh, uh, half fill up the sink um uh, so you'll see down here the uh, the toilet uh, uh oh no i'll put the uh, what i will do after this video i'll put the toilet uh section into here but the toilet you, you know it's got a nice little sink in there and i i would just half fill it up have a bar of soap use my hands wash myself to take a couple of minutes and that's it job done save me 18 minutes a day uh which adds up um and you know every maybe five days the hair needed to be washed and it'd get a little bit itchy um and uh, I, I know i've talked to some people who are full-timing and they hardly ever i don't think they wash their hair at all so there's lots of studies now showing if you don't wash your hair it's a lot better for your hair and the itch will suddenly uh, start going um so you could experiment uh, uh you know not washing your hair at all um you might enjoy that 
so yeah, here's, here's the Heimer B534. So this is what we chose. Um, so it's just under 20 feet. Uh, so, um, and uh, what, you know, you know, you can go, you can do Google, you can, you can find out lots of, um, uh, lots of motorhome sites selling, you know, these. So I'm not going to give you uh, all the, you know, the specs and everything. I'll just give you what I, I thought was the positive um, and the negative for me. So here I've got a positive and uh, the U-shaped, lounge was a big big positive so i come up here and i'll show you the u-shaped lounge um it is uh there so the u-shaped lounge look at that and there you got the you got the windows all the way around at the back so you've got a uh, just amazing view um when you're parked up wild camping so you're going to obviously if you're wild camping you'll be parked up in lots of different areas and most of them are really beautiful um amazing areas so you want to have the best view possible uh, and there's uh, just amazing views with this lounge so that was a big bonus but weirdly that wasn't the absolute uh, biggest positive for us so um, uh, the big big biggest positive was the the roll down bed so it saved a load of space so this is German designed Heimer you know they're very clever with their engineering and so if I click on the, the roll down bed you'll see there it is over the cab so there's the cab area and the roll down bed just you know comes down there and um the default mattress is really really comfortable so it was pretty much just as comfortable as our normal bed uh, at home so you've got a lot of space and also it comes down a long way uh, you've got to uh, uh you've got a lot of space here so on a lot of the uh, the motones when the where the cab's in the front and it's not a roll down You've got a tiny little bit of space you know we we went to a lot of motorhoming places and uh you know climbed in and we were like oh my god this is claustrophobic couldn't uh you know a horrible feeling but this has pretty much got twice the space of a normal motorhome um because it rolls down so far um so that was that was our biggest um benefit to us because what that does is if you see here all that space it's like four or five feet of extra space so if we had to have that bed uh, like in some of the big motorhomes and like normally they have the bed at the back of the uh, uh the motorhome that's an extra four or five feet for your motorhome so instead of this being a 19 footer uh it would you know it would be 24 25 feet and that would then be utterly impractical to um uh to wild camping um so that, you know, purely on a wild camping uh, deal, uh, that was the absolute winner for us, having this roll down bed. And we could just, you know, when we got up in the morning, we could just take it up. We didn't have to take, you know, some of the motorhomes, you've got to, um, you know, your bed comes out and uh, on the side and you've got to put away your bedding all the time. And we thought, no, we're full timing for 18 months. If we had to do that every day, that'd be a nightmare. So here you just, plonk it back up to the top forget about it and then plonk it down again when at night when you go to bed um i mean if you've got any injuries or you're you know very big or something uh you've got to come up this uh, like there's some um a bit of a mini ladder that it comes with um so that'd be maybe just one of the the, the negatives of it so if you uh, you know you'd struggle to get up into the bed that's obviously a problem um but you probably aren't going to be wild camping um, if that's the case. You'd, you'd be probably going to a you know, normal motorhoming campsite. Uh, so that's not really a negative for wild campers. So, uh, yeah, that's it really. So uh, I, uh, I hope you like, um, like this video and have found it informative. Um, if you're doing your trip, um, planning your trip, um, you know, I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll add a lot more. So here what I've got is um i've obviously talked about the heimer b534 here um uh, after this video i'm going to add um, probably several more compact um motorhomes so that i'm obviously biased to the b534 but i've actually got now after our trip we um we got a, a b544 heimer motorhome which has got a slightly different layout so i'll add that to this um uh to this post and I'll probably do some videos, a video on each of the ones that I add. Um, so uh, good luck with your research. And if you have any questions, just come up to contact us, send me an email and be, uh, I'll be glad to help you out. 
I almost forgot about the negative. So yeah, even though this was, uh, you know, this ticked virtually every box we had, uh, there was a negative. Uh, there were probably a couple of negatives. The top negative was that the wing mirrors were uh, immovable. So they didn't, uh, you couldn't move them back or forth. Um, which is weird because virtually every other motorhome, even every other Heimer motorhome, you've got uh, wing mirrors. Um, maybe it was just that year. Uh, I think I forget which year we had. I think we had a 93 or a 94 um, Heimer B534. And so maybe just that year they decided, I know what, let's... Uh, uh, let's <laughs> Let's not make the uh, wing mirrors movable. Let's get, keep them stuck. The problem with that is that if you hit anything uh, at any speed whatsoever, uh, the wing mirror comes off. Uh, not just comes off, it rips off. Um, uh, and you have to then stop your motorhome, collect all the bits, and then spend a few days trying to find a mechanic that can put it back on. So that's not fun. Uh, and that happened, I think it happened three times. Definitely happened twice. I think, I think it happened three times. It happened three times, but once it didn't come all the way off. So we, we were able to kind of use it for a while without having to go to a mechanic. Um, but it was wobbling a lot. Um, so really it happened three times. Uh, and we had to go to a mechanic uh, three times eventually. Um, and uh, yeah, so... Bit of a nightmare really a bit of a waste of time so and it's something that is so i mean what you can what we were if we'd known about this before we went we probably would have gone to somewhere and uh, put movable um wing mirrors on uh, got someone to do that for us and that probably would have cost of you know maybe a couple hundred quid or something uh, that would have been a really good investment and saved us a lot of time so that was the main negative the other negative we had i think because our uh, probably we we had one that where and we didn't know this was our first motorhome we ever had so we weren't sure what you know what was normal and what wasn't but uh, it was quite slow up hills so if it'd go up a steep hill uh, we'd have to go up in first gear um, and I subsequently found out that with our B544 we can you know we could zoom you know this was older so the B544 that we got was two years older so it was a 91 that we got uh, the next motorhome after the B534 uh, was two years older than that one and it zoomed up the hills in third gear and it was the joy <laughs> joy to ride it's not that big of a deal if you're going up a really steep hill uh, in a motorhome not that often you're going up a really steep hill um but um uh that is you know it was a negative that but that was probably because it was you know very old uh and then we were well, not very old because our our next motorhome was even older and it was performed a lot better but maybe that that motorhome um yeah maybe the engine was you know wasn't great uh, but maybe other b534s don't have that problem and they can you know go up hills not in first gear so um that's it i think i'm going to pause the video just in case i think of anything else but if not um happy motorhoming